Okay, good morning team and welcome to our what is actually our final lesson on probability. Um, of course we're going to come back to it probably in year 10 and year 11, not at this same stage, we're going to be taking it a whole lot further, but for now this is our final lesson on probability. You've done your big MCQ, now we're closing the gaps and we're just making sure you have a true understanding so when you do your end of term assessment you in the best position to get full marks or the best you could do. Before we start this lesson, a quick reminder, writing pen or pencil, I don't really mind. Um, make sure you're doing all of your work on paper. We're calling around at the moment just to check that and just to make sure all of your maths lessons are up to scratch. But really important, you're doing all your maths on paper, you're putting your dating title down so you know where to come back to and you are ticking and fixing in a green pen if it's got any ink left. If not, you're just ticking and fixing in any pen. Okay, quick reminder, we are having a drop-in session tomorrow, our first one of the week at 12. Um, I will be using that session to go over any probability and also just looking at tomorrow's lesson angles as well. Um, it'd be great to see as many of you there as possible. My big head's in the way, the code is TFS9 Matt. Okay, so without further ado, we are on to our final probability knowledge check. Um, what I'd like you to do, pause the video when you're ready, I'll give you a bit of support. All of the cards below are hidden. What is the probability that a two will be chosen? Number of favorable outcomes divided by number of possible outcomes. How many twos are there divided by how many cards there are in total? Name the polygon, and that just means name the shape. 48 to the nearest 10, is it closer to 40 or 50? 480 to the nearest 100, is it closer to 400 or 500? Square numbers, one times one equals two, three times three equals nine. Pause the video team and best of luck. Okay, answers coming on the board then. I'd like you to tick and fix. So the first one, I have how many twos do I have? I've got three of them, five cards in total, three over five or 0 0.6 or 60%. All of the cards below are hidden. What is the probability that a multiple of four will be chosen? Zero is impossible. There are no multiples of four. It's not a four, it's not an eight, it's not a 12, it's not a 60, it's not a 20, it's not a 24, and so on. Okay, rounding, I'm just going to put those up on the board. That squiggly equal sign means approximately equal to. Name the shapes. If they're regular polygons, the first one be a square, but it's a quadrilateral. The next one's a pentagon. The next one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Prefix hex, I've got hexagon, and the last one is, oh, that should be hectagon. Stupid. Let me just pause the video quick. Okay, so we're back ready to go. All answers on the board now. Tick and fix. I must be no thinking the hectagon, septagon, because in America sometimes they refer to it as septagon because they are wrong. Okay. So what I want to be doing now is going through two we do examples with probability, one you do, and then I go look at that last really challenging question that only about six people got right on the MCQ and it could have been guessing. So we're going to start off with this. We've got one question like this. I'd like you to either copy it down or make notes. I don't mind what you do, but I've got the cards to the right are going to be flipped over and shuffled. So they're going to be completely random. What is the probability that, sorry, the probability that I will pick a prime number? So I'm going to be using back to that. Probability equals the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. Really important. If you can't remember that every time now, copy that down. So to work out the probability that I will pick a prime number, I'm going to be using this above. First off, I'm just going to make a note of me breaking down this question. Cards to the right are going to be flipped over and shuffled. Not that relevant. The probability I will pick a prime number. Prime number, I've got 2, 3, 5, 7. I can keep going, but I can see in this table no, none of them go that high, so that doesn't matter. I can sort out my dodgy 2 as well. Looks a bit like a 3. Don't like that. Damn, wasting time. It's like art attack. No. Well, you won't remember what that is. That's sad. 
There we go. Okay, so I'm going to be using the number of possible outcomes. That is just the number of cards in total. I've got one, two, three. I've got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Now I need to look at my number of favourable outcomes. Now, in fancy terms, that just means, well, no, if I take it out of fancy terms, it means number of prime numbers. Let's count the prime numbers. One, two, is one a prime number? No, is in the quick file last lesson. Three, four, five, six. I have six favourable outcomes, I have six prime numbers. So the probability that I pick a prime number is going to be something over 15, it's going to be 6 over 15, you can leave that as your answer. If you converted it to a decimal, you'd get 0 0.4. Okay, that's one question done. Pause here to any notes on that you need to. There's going to be one very similar to that on the you do. Okay, one more. A group of friends are playing a game with a full set of playing cards. All cards are shuffled into a deck, random. What is the probability that the top card is not an ace, two, or three? So we come back to our probability. Number of favourable outcomes, in this case, not an ace, two, or three. Number of possible outcomes, all the number of cards. Okay, so the number of possible outcomes are going to be all the cards. All the cards in a deck, I've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52. Okay, now I need to see how many are not an ace, two, or three. I've got a pointer still. So I can't have any aces, twos, or threes because I do not want an ace, two, or three. How many am I left with? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. So the probability of not picking an ace is going to be something over 52. It's going to be 40 over 52. Sorry, the probability I will not pick an ace, two, or three. That's your answer. Write it as a decimal if you want. It's 0 0.77. You can just leave it as a fraction. That's fine. Okay, what I want you to do now, then, team, is this. I'm going to put these four questions up on the board with a chili. They're different to some of the ones you've seen so far. One of them you might have seen already in a recent quiz but what i'd like you to do team is pause the video and give it your best shot i'll be giving you some support as we go okay so the first one the probability i will pick a multiple of three the multiples of three are three six and i think i only need the first ones at the moment i've got three six nine so how many of those have i got count them all over 12. An eight sided spinner, number two, this is giving you a bit of support. An eight, a fair eight sided spinner has size numbered one to eight. So I just write out those sides if I needed them. These are the, the numbers that could come up. You can leave your answers just as fractions. What is the probability that the spinner will land on a multiple of two? The two, four, six, or eight, or a ten. How many of those come up? Okay, question four, just be careful. Factors of 12 that will not be rolled. And it's 14 sided. Okay, if you're still working, I'd like to pause the video. The answer coming on the board in three. Three pens in three, the red pen. Three pens in three, two, one, go. The first one, I've got three over 12 or 0 0.25. The next one, I've got four over eight, that's in close to a half or 0 0.5. I drop my green pen. It's like magic, it actually becomes a green pen. The next one, I've got 0 0.4 or four temps. The next one, I've got six over 14 or 0 0.43. Probability that factor of 12 will not be rolled. Right, team, just double checking this one. One, two, three, four, six, 
and 12. I'm looking at probability not rolled. So this one here, I should have 8 over 14. My apologies. Chili on the board. And you can see my working out behind my head there. Okay, great. All right, what I'd like to do now is move on to our quick fire today's lesson. Bill was on exactly the same as yesterday, our percentages, and you did really well. You showed me that in the comments, so I don't want to be talking to you for it too much. Instead, I'm going to ask for black or blue pen in the air, and we're going to start in three, two, one. Ah, three, two, one, go. Okay, best of luck. To find 10%, you divide by 10. To find 50%, you divide by 2. Use your skills to work out the rest. To find 10%, you divide by 10. To find 60%, 50%, and 10%. Okay, green pens in three. What's the do if you're still going? Three, two, one, go. Answer coming on the board. 90 divided by 10 equals 9. Next one, I've got 0 0.9. 8. And half of 80 is 40. 10% equals 8 and 50% equals 40. 60% equals 48. 5% of 80, if 10% equals 8, then 5% must equal 4. 6%, 4.8. You've got some commutativity going on there, so you've also got 4.8. The last three are on the board team, tick and fix. Okay, what I want to do, just to finish this lesson, we've only got about two minutes left. I just want to have a look at this problem and just explain how you guys got on yesterday. So I'm just going to write this down. I think of a number, I call it N. I add three to the number. I'll just write out five. I add three to the number, I multiply it by five, and my answer is 25. Okay, I just want to show you this. So I have a number, I call it n. If I was to add 3 to that number, I'd write it as n add 3. Now I have to times it by 5. Now if I just wrote 5n, it wouldn't times the 3 by 5 as well, but it's after the 3, so it must times it all by 5. So I'm going to put it in brackets, and I get 5 bracket n plus 3. I've been told it equals 25. Same. I don't want you stressed about this. This is a really tiny problem. Only about six of you got it right. So two ways of showing this. Well, three ways. This is one. I could also expand it out. And I can get 5n add 15 equals 25. That was one of your answers. Or if I wanted to solve this, instead of times in this by 5, I could use my inverse operation. If I have 5 times n plus 3 equals 25, the inverse of times by 5 is to divide by 5. If I divide both sides by 5 as a first step, I get n plus 3 equals 5. So you've got another equivalent there. Okay, this 25 keeps coming up over and over again. So I'll make that a password for today's lesson. And I will leave you with these problems, team. First, just talk through this. We do, I think of a number, I call it n. I multiply it by six. Now I'd write n times six as six n. I then add four. And my answer is 28. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna leave you with those four problems. Um, this is just to close the gaps in that final question on the MCQ, but best of luck, team. Okay, finishing the lesson. Green pens. Actually, a green one. In three, two, one, go. And answers are on the board. I don't want you worrying about this too much. We're going to look at this when we return to school as well. Okay, team. Epic. I hope you found that last lesson on probability really useful. Um, I'm pretty certain you're all doing really well. I won't start that again. Um, just make sure you're doing all of the lessons, otherwise you're going to find it impossible when you get back to school.
All right, thank you, team, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.